tonight on Cronkite News, the Supreme Court ruled against the Navajo Nation in a dispute against the Colorado River. Plus, triple-digit temps are here to stay. What you can do to save some money on your electric bill. And find out what changes the Mercury are making after dropping their fourth straight game on Wednesday. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Eduardo Morales. And I'm Alexandria Cullen. Thank you for joining us. June marks the one-year anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision being overturned. After the Dobbs v. Jackson Supreme case decision, there was much confusion regarding the law in Arizona surrounding the legalities of abortion within the state. I took a deeper look into one year later why that confusion still remains. The June 2022 Dobbs v. Jackson decision allowed the states to regulate their own laws restricting abortion. This landmark judgment stirred controversy and confusion across the country impacting some states like Arizona more significantly than others. Since the overturn, there's been a lot of confusion, and not only in the medical community and the legal community, but among patients. So it's been confusing for patients. Many patients, even to this day, are confused if abortion is legal in our state. Abortion is legal in Arizona up to 15 weeks. However, Dr. Goodrick says the changing laws have impacted how doctors treat their patients. Physicians in general and hospitals are much more hesitant to help women that are having complications of pregnancy, miscarriages, ectopic pregnancies, premature rupture of membranes. Um, they're much more hesitant to help. Dr. Goodrick goes on to say that all people of reproductive age are feeling the effects of the changing law. However, those who advocate against abortion say they'll continue to educate individuals to combat the confusion. Current president of Center for Arizona Policy, Kathy Harrod, says that information includes telling the public about reproductive issues and expanding pregnancy support. We have a pro-life movement, pregnancy resource centers that have expanded their services to meet the needs of more and more women who choose to carry their children or choose a place for adoption. Dr. Goodrick says that the path of both the abortion rights and anti-abortion movement hinges on the outcome of the 2024 election. So the main thing is to get out and vote and get people you care about to vote. Governor Hobbs and Arizona legislators and other abortion rights advocates don't want to wait until the next election. Today, the group held a press conference to talk about a state law to protect access to contraceptives. Bri Pacelli was at the conference to hear about next steps. Last week, the U.S. Senate reintroduced the Right to the Contraception Act that would protect access to all forms of birth control. But now, state lawmakers, including Governor Katie Hobbs and Representative Athena Salmon, announced they would be filing a bill at the state level to give some protections when it comes to access to contraceptives, because they say Arizonans could lose their right to contraceptives with one court decision. We are in a crisis right now. This is an emergency. Arizonans right now have the right to know and have the right to have the peace of mind that when they go to bed, their contraception will still be available to them when they wake up in the morning and they carry on with, with their lives, with their careers, with their, their families, etc. Lawmakers say they will file the bill in the next legislative session, which starts in 2024. They say if they can't get the bill heard, they will consider a ballot initiative. In the newsroom, Brie Pacelli, Cronkite News. Today, the Supreme Court ruled against the Navajo Nation, ending a long fight over water from the Colorado River. At the heart of the case, treaties with the Navajo people dating back to the 1800s. One treaty calls the nation their permanent home, and the Navajo argued that also includes a supply of water. But the Supreme Court said today the treaty does not require the government to provide access to water. As the temps really start to rise, so does the danger. Daniel Pike explains why. Yeah, guys, it actually is a really hot night tonight. Around 100 degrees right now, cools off to around 90 and clear skies throughout the evening. Something to keep in mind is the heat index, meaning not just the temperature, but how hot it feels. 115 degrees on Sunday, 114 on Monday. That means that it's going to feel really hot. Stay tuned for the full forecast. Rising temps means we'll all be cranking up the AC, but the Arizona Corporation Commission has just approved a rate increase for APS customers beginning next month. The average user will see their rates increase about $1.84 per month. APS is also giving customers some tips on how to save money this summer. First, APS suggests turning up your thermostat because you can save up to 3% on your energy bill for every degree you raise your thermostat. Next, utilize your ceiling fans because they can cool a room by 5 degrees. 
but make sure those fans are turned counterclockwise during the summer. And finally, switch to LED lights because they use 90% less energy than traditional ones. The NBA draft is tonight and the Suns have one selection in the late second round. This comes after the team traded pick number 21 to the Brooklyn Nets in a package deal bringing Kevin Durant to the Valley. Last year, U Arizona made history with three players selected within the first 33 picks. Tonight, they may get one. Azulis Tabellis is on the board. The most draft projections have the forward going in the late second round. Tabellis averaged nearly 21 points and just over nine rebounds for the Wildcats last year. For ASU, Marcus Bagley is the lone Sun Devil in the draft. Although he played in only five games in the last two years, Bagley kept his name in the draft. Injuries in his rocky time in Tempe may hinder his chances of getting drafted at all. The Phoenix Mercury have been on a downward spiral, sitting at the bottom of the league with two and nine record and dealing with injuries to Brittany Griner, Diana Teasi, and Shea Petty. Cronkite reporter Crystal Stone tells us how the team is focusing on the bright side of what's been a very rocky start. While the weather heats up in the valley, the Phoenix Mercury season is getting cold after a 99 to 79 loss to the reigning WNBA champion Las Vegas Aces Wednesday. The Mercury haven't seen the win column in four straight games. Hopeful to have some of our players who were unable to play tonight back and um, I think that will help us a lot. Uh, they account for a lot of points and a lot of rebounds um, and that should that should help us. They also have to take better care of the ball. While the Mercury averaged 17 turnovers per game, the most in the league, they only committed 10 against the Aces yesterday. These little wins give them confidence. Game by game, um, I think that we are getting better, um, even though the result isn't a win. Um, I think that that's something that we we're talking about in the locker room and staying positive. While the Mercury have struggled to find success as a team with Griner and Tarasi out, there have been individual successes. Shook Sutton hit a career high 21 points, and it's been her presence that's provided much needed stability for this team. We're, we haven't won a lot of games, but for Shug, this is what uh, she's dreamed about her whole life, and she's getting the opportunity. And then, you know, when people get injured or aren't available, we're getting players stepping in that are getting that opportunity. Megan Gustafson is taking advantage of the extra playing time while Griner is out, posting a second career double double. As they wait for the stars to return, she says this is a chance for the role players to get better. Because that's really what what helps those younger players um, develop is to get time on the floor. And so once we have that, we're going to have a lot of experience going into the rest of the season. The Mercury are also getting some help from Gustafson's best friend, Sam Thomas. The former Arizona Wildcat cut from the Mercury's training camp roster last month, rejoined the team on an injury replacement contract just prior to Wednesday's game. She's such a great player. Um, she's a really good shooter, good defender, and so we really need that right now. The Mercury will certainly need all hands on deck as they try to keep this season's ship from sinking. In Phoenix, Crystal Stone, Cronkite News. Coming up next, a warning from officials for visiting busy lakes. We'll tell you why officials are so worried about this popular getaway for Valley residents. And the latest on the search for the missing submarine with five passengers on board. What the Coast Guard is saying today. Find out what's on Arizona PBS at azpbs.org slash schedule. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music. This is Sun City Garage. To sports coverage. Against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like. To news. The bill also gives parents the ability to see. And entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. Welcome to the State Press, ASU student-run news organization that covers everything ASU. As one of the longest standing student-run newsrooms in the country, the State Press offers a glimpse into a real newsroom environment. The State Press has been cited by organizations such as CNN, The Washington Post, MSNBC, and many more. Students gain valuable experience in reporting, editing, photography, and even podcasting. The State Press is home to some of ASU's hardest working and most dedicated students, so feel free to join. This is CN to go I'm Emily Olson with your Wednesday News Briefing. Do you want to create innovative content for Cronkite News? 
Do you enjoy listening to podcasts? Then CN to Go is for you. Cronkite News to Go is a podcast where students cover the latest headlines. Students become audio producers and hosts and will learn how to write, record, and edit stories. You can listen to the latest episodes on these platforms. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What you want. Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. You look like you need rescue. Stay me on. What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. Sad news to report in the search for a missing tourist submarine. The U.S. Coast Guard said today that all five people on board are presumed to have passed away. The Coast Guard says also found debris in the search area consistent with the implosion. The submarine disappeared on Sunday during a trip to see the wreckage of the Titanic. The Coast Guard says it will continue to search for the seafloor to determine what exactly happened. And a terrifying night in Colorado after the skies opened up during a concert. That's right. Hail the size of golf balls began falling on the crowd, injuring at least 90 people. It happened last night at the famed Red Rocks Amphitheater outside of Denver. Most of the people hurt had bumps and bruises, even broken bones. Seven people had to be hospitalized. Well, no hail or storm in our future back here in the valley. But we can expect really hot weather. Daniel Pike joins us now with what we can expect. Yeah, it is a moderate evening tonight, around 94 degrees, 90 degrees later on this evening. Clear skies and the stars will be out, as you can see in Phoenix. Not a cloud in the sky. Down in Tucson, however, we are going to get some cloud action as well as Sierra Vista. But in Phoenix, nothing in tomorrow morning. As well in Tucson, it does clear up. And then nothing from your drive home tomorrow night from work. For the weekend, we are approaching that pool weather. Summer started yesterday, so it is going to get quite hot in Arizona here. 108 degrees on Saturday here in the valley. Make sure to be safe. Drink lots of water, especially by the pool. Your low temperatures, 35 degrees in Flagstaff, 69 degrees in Phoenix. That's a pretty standard low temperature around this time of year. And it's hot everywhere across the valley. Even up north in Page, 88 degrees, 101 in the valley, and 102 in Tucson. For the eight-day forecast, 100 degrees tomorrow, 108 on Sunday. And guess what we got coming? 114 degrees next Friday. That means 120 is on the way. Might be time to go to the movie, stay inside, because guess what? You don't want to be baking in that hot, hot sun. From the Cronkite Weather Center, this is Daniel Pike. Well, if you're planning to head up to Bartlett Reservoir Lake to beat the heat, a warning. That's because the U.S. Forest Service has issued a public health advisory over concerns of algae in the water. The Forest Service says it's found blue-green algae in the water. That's significant because of that type of algae is known to create a toxin dangerous to both humans and pets. The Forest Service says all other recreation sites remain open, but urge you to avoid any contact with the water. Coming up, hear from a recent Brophy Track alum who is making a big jump to the next level. Find out how the star progressed in such a short amount of time and why he stuck with track after being a multi-sport athlete. Plus, learn how the Section 7 Boys Tournament is giving players a chance at the next level. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sensity Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like, to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. 
Welcome to the State Press, ASU's student-run news organization that covers everything ASU. As one of the longest standing student-run newsrooms in the country, the State Press offers a glimpse into a real newsroom environment. The State Press has been cited by organizations such as CNN, The Washington Post, MSNBC, and many more. Students gain valuable experience in reporting, editing, photography, and even podcasting. The State Press is home to some of ASU's hardest working and most dedicated students, so feel free to join. This is cn to go I'm Emily Olson with your Wednesday News Briefing. Do you want to create innovative content for Cronkite News? Do you enjoy listening to podcasts? Then cn to go is for you. Cronkite News To Go is a podcast where students cover the latest headlines. Students become audio producers and hosts and will learn how to write, record, and edit stories. You can listen to the latest episodes on these platforms. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What do you want? Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. Oh. You look like you need rescue. Don't we all? What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. One of the biggest shows in all of high school basketball is back in Arizona, and with more teams and more star power in the mix. Adrian Carbajal explains why the tournament is so important for these teams. Section 7 is back in the valley and it is bigger than ever with more than 500 college recruiters coming to scout the country's best talent. But not only is the event giving the biggest stars their shine, it's also giving the lesser known athletes and schools the opportunity to recruit and be recruited. Honestly, back in Flagstaff, not many college coaches, if I'm to be honest. So coming out here to an opportunity, it's, it's really important. And just having the chance to play and be the best player for your team really shows to these coaches. Playing here in State Farm Arena, it's, it's surreal. I can't even lie. But Flagstaff forward Harrison Freach isn't the only one grateful for the opportunity. Coach Nick Walton can't emphasize enough how important playing in the tournament is for his players and the team's development. It's nice for um, the guys to come to a spot where there's going to be a lot of coaches that are going to be in one location. I know, I know it's hard at times to get noticed, and so it gives our guys an opportunity to showcase what they can do and, and be in front of a lot of people to uh, help get noticed and perhaps get an opportunity to play at the next level. Despite how important it is for both the coaches and the players to have events like these, it's also as important for the recruiters to be at events like these because they also have one common goal in mind. Man, I'm out here to change people's lives, man. Chris Martin is a coach at Eastern Arizona College, and he came to Section 7 hoping to give a player an opportunity that he never had. I can only do so much, but that little bit that I can do, who knows what it can do. I come from the inner city of L.A., and, you know, something like this, this event, I didn't have this platform, so just seeing these kids on this platform is dope, man. And it being, being able to give them a scholarship that can hopefully change their lives and help them continue their grind and chase their dream of going to a university and then moving on from there. While many of these lower name programs will be getting the chance to showcase some star power of their own the first two days of the tournament, the biggest names in the country will be here competing for bragging rights starting Friday. From Glendale, Adrian Carbajal, Cronkite News. Many high school athletes in the Valley will continue their careers in college. That's the case for one Brophy track and field star who took up the sport just four years ago but quickly parlayed his talent into a college scholarship. Cronkite sports reporter Nicholas Petrisky tells us more about the journey in the athlete. Meet Brennan McHenry, a senior at Brophy College Prep. As a kid, Brennan planned to play basketball in college, but after arriving at Brophy, that plan changed. Coming into Brophy freshman year, I was always a basketball player, and that was my main goal. Um, I didn't even think about track at all. And I eventually actually got cut uh, in the winter from that freshman team that I was hoping to make, and that was pretty disappointing. A friend convinced Brennan to try out track, having never competed in track prior to his freshman year. McHenry drew inspiration from former Brophy athletes. Just someone from my school that could do great in the sport that I'm doing 
and that just gave me the motivation and passion from getting cut from the basketball team to try something I was naturally good at, which was jumping. He would always jump, like trying to reach the doorways in the house, trying to always jump up and reach something. Brennan continued to jump, competing in high jump, long jump, and also hurdles. But Brennan was faced with a choice during a meet that altered the course of his athletic career. I was in the middle of high jump and the 300 hurdles started and I, was, I had the choice to stay at high jump and try and jump a new PR or to go over and run 300 hurdles. Brennan stayed at high jump and was now only a high and long jumper. Then COVID hit and during lockdown, Brennan wanted to train and get better, finding a unique way to do just that with an at-home version of a high jump pit. Right here we got the mattress and an old gymnastics pad right here. Um, I think the gymnastics pad, we got it for like 20 bucks somewhere. Um, and then used mattress, we got that one for free. After lots of practice on his makeshift high jump pit area, Brennan continued to find motivation. And that motivation came in the form of an improved relationship with his faith. I would say after my retreat um, on Kairos, that Brophy allowed me to do. Uh, that really changed my perspective on mass. Um, I used to think of it just like as fulfilling a need to go every Sunday. On his track spikes, Brennan has two Bible verses written, and it served as a reminder of his faith when he competes. My left one, I have uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I tell myself that and I really believe it, I feel like I can do anything. And on my right shoe, um, it's even though I walk through the darkest of valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. And that also really helps me too. With an improved relationship with God, Brennan was able to shift his focus and during his junior year, jump a new PR, a record that led to him committing to the University of Texas. We kept contact through his junior year and then his senior year, he came on a visit here. And then, you know, obviously this year for him has been outstanding, you know, so. <clears throat> He's kind of the atypical kid you look for. McHenry is eager to get started in Austin, and with all that is available, he says the sky's the limit. I can't wait. I think it's going to be really amazing to maximize my potential um, in the classroom and on the track. I think that where I'm at right now, it's going to go even higher and higher. In Phoenix, Nicholas Petrisky, Cronkite Sports. An endangered baby penguin is thriving in a New England aquarium. Coming up next, we explain the early stages of this chick's life and where she is now. A ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage. To sports coverage. Against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like... To news. The bill also gives parents the ability to see... And entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. Welcome to the State Press, ASU student-run news organization that covers everything ASU. As one of the longest standing student-run newsrooms in the country, the State Press offers a glimpse into a real newsroom environment. The State Press has been cited by organizations such as CNN, The Washington Post, MSNBC, and many more. Students gain valuable experience in reporting, editing, photography, and even podcasting. The State Press is home to some of ASU's hardest working and most dedicated students, so feel free to join. This is CN to go I'm Emily Olson with your Wednesday News Briefing. Do you want to create innovative content for Cronkite News? Do you enjoy listening to podcasts? Then CN to go is for you. Cronkite News to go is a podcast where students cover the latest headlines. Students become audio producers and hosts and will learn how to write, record, and edit stories. You can listen to the latest episodes on these platforms. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What you want. 
Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. You look like you need rescue. Don't we all? What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. A baby chick at the New England Aquarium is officially three months old. This officially means she is old enough to join the rest of the penguin colony. The African penguin is named Bray and is now weighing in at 6.6 .6 pounds. 42 times her original hatch weight. In her habitat, she's surrounded by her loved ones, including her great-grandmother. The endangered species of African penguins usually lives around 10 to 15 years in their native habitat, which is located along the coast of South Africa. That's it for Cronkite News. Thank you for joining us. And to see top Arizona stories anytime, log to Cronkite News at azpbs.org.